Though it was built by the Black Rose, in truth, wizards of all the orders were welcome. Welcome to another Dragonlance Saga episode. My name is Adam, and today I'm going to talk about the Tower of High Sorcery of Los Sarkum, the Black Knife. I'd like to take a moment and thank the DL Saga members and invite you to consider becoming a member by visiting the link in the description below. You can even pick up Dragonlance game materials using my affiliate links. Now, I'm referencing the Towers of High Sorcery source book for this information. If I leave anything out or misspeak, please leave a comment below. It was the death of Shaud, the Black Robe, who protected Weyrith from the Utkiri that provided Grawl Bonefist with the opportunity to become head of the Orders of the Black Robes. Grawl was the most feared mage of his age, and when High Master Karo dispatched the three factions to build their Towers of High Sorcery, Grawlin chose Kim Sudri, the City of Stone. Kim Sudri was located in the heart of a maze of canyons called the Sun's Anvil, or the Tears of Mishikal, depending on your background. The entire city was constructed from a hollowed-out mesa made of sandstone. The residents of Kim Sudri were the strongest desert riders of the Sea of Shifting Sands. Unlike his fellow wizards of high sorcery, Grawl didn't care about the residents and arrived with an army of black robes. The desert riders attacked, but were routed by the awesome power of the black robes. During the conflict, Grawl cast the spell of raising, and a spike of obsidian rose from the sandstone rim overlooking the city. The desert riders respected the wizards for their courage and power, just as Grell had calculated. While the other towers were at peace with their neighbors, this tower only knew a thousand years of conflict. The Sand Riders would rise to attack and attempt to expel the Black Robes with each successive generation, but the wizards would always repel them directly or indirectly with their grove. Ironically, when the Sand Riders asked for assistance to repel outsiders, the wizards always came to their aid. Ultimately, the orders felt that this constant conflict would tarnish their reputation and crafted a small army of nine-foot Malachite statues that would animate an attack if provoked. A lasting peace did finally come through the machinations of Moranda, an ambitious wizardess who yearned to be the master of the tower. Through her schemes, she ingratiated herself with the Sand Riders and aided their leader to overthrow the reigning tyrant, in the end, her victory won, and peace was the prize. Of course, Miranda did eventually become the master of the tower, and even the high mage for 20 years. With the support of the Black Robes, the Sand Riders of Kim Sudri became the most powerful tribe in the region, and eventually crafted a new realm through war called the Khanate of Dravenar. Dravenar soon grew through further conquests to become a massive kingdom the likes of Istar and Ergoth themselves. Even Salamnia had plans to invade and make war with this new dark empire. The red robes had Ergoth, the white, Istar, and the black thrilled in their realm with the tower's master being second in command only to the Khan himself. It was the third dragon war that would spell the beginning of the end for Dravenar and the tower. When the Orders of High Sorcery withdrew from their towers to stand against the Dark Queen, the Dravenar saw an opportunity of expansion with the world's eyes in the West. They sought aid from the Master of the Tower, but he refused, and the Khan cut him down. Then he took his armies north against Istar, who also sought aid from the Wizards and found them missing. The Clerics aided Istar in their time of need, and the Khan was killed in battle. Within 30 years, the once mighty nation of Dravenar declined as Istar fought back after the war. After a series of civil wars, the last Khan died by his own hand as Istar approached his city. In its own expansion, Istar broke Dravenar in two, becoming the poorest of Istar's provinces. The wizards of the tower saw how the Istarians treated their tower in the Lord's city, so they cast magic to make the tower appear abandoned. It lasted for 700 years until the king priest Beldinas Pilofiro came to the province now called Losarcum. He called out to Paladine to lift the cloaking spell over the tower and revealed the wizards inside. 
The king priest demanded that the wizards vacate the tower and the orders' emissary, Marwart, suggested trading masters of the tower from Daltikoth, a red-robed mage, with the current black robe. This pacified the king priest for a while until the lost battles. The king priest would send his armies to Losarkum to force the wizards to leave. When word was returned from Daltikoth that it had been destroyed, the wizards told the commander what would happen if they attacked the tower, but it did not dissuade them. In the end, the tower was destroyed by the orders and the entire city with it. Only three people survived. Lord Cathan, the commander, his friend Sir Tithian, and the wizardess Lessianne, who teleported them to safety. Lessianne would die shortly after. The glistening black tower of Losarkum was shaped like a stiletto, which gave it its name, Jandhar Azuya, the Black Knife. It rested on a promontory above the city of Sandstone. It stood 400 feet, dominating the skyline, and its shadow would stretch across the city like a reaching finger each day. At night, it burned with reflected twilight, appearing to be a crimson flame. The other orders were represented on its parapets, with two red-accented spires and a silvery-white needle at its apex. The walls were obsidian black, and when viewed, you would see your own reflection, then other faces, instilling the notion that you are insignificant in a larger world. Though there was a traditional interior series of rooms, underneath the tower was the vast majority of its rooms, some even connecting to the abyss itself. After the cataclysm, the buried bits of the destroyed city would resurface and come to be known as the ruins. All that remains of the tower is a pool of black glass surrounded by a ring of stones. Some scholars believe that Malastrix leveraged the remnant power of the ruins to create the desolation and the affliction that decimated the Kender race. In its day, the grove that surrounded Losarkum, known as Sorthan Grove, was the most skillfully wrought. It was created by Yalashim the Mind Reaver, the greatest enchanter of the Second Age of Kryn. The grove used the intruder's passions against them, forcing each who entered the grove to experience something vastly different. It was filled with a thick mass of cypress trees whose branches hypnotized every living being that would enter it. Those who survived the grove revealed that their thoughts turned ever inward, stopping them from moving and becoming lost in their own minds. Ultimately, a lover would find their hands at their partner's throat, a warrior would be defeated by a weaker foe, and a wealthy man would become penniless in their minds. This forced them all to collapse, sobbing, and succumbing to despair. The Tower of Losarkum, or Dravenar, or Kim Sudri, was a place of dark experimentation and power. It seemed to be fated to rise and fall in power with those around it, but in the end, its ruins are still feared by those who have found themselves stumbling across them. With rumors of treasure, the ruins draw potential adventurers, only to feed most of their bodies to the shifting sands of the region. The destruction of Daltigoth and Losarkum turned the tide of the Lost Wars and arguably saved the other towers from a similar fate. But that is all the time I have to talk about the Tower of High Sorcery in Losarkum, the Black Knife. What do you think about the ruins? Are there ancient artifacts beneath the surface? Would you ever explore its caverns? And finally, would you ever play a second or third age campaign in Dravenar? Leave a comment below. I'd like to take a moment and remind you to subscribe to this YouTube channel, ring the bell to get notified about upcoming videos, and click the like button. This all goes to help other Dragonlance fans learn about this channel and its content. Thank you for watching. This has been Adam with Dragonlance Saga, and until next time, remember, most of us walk in light and shadow, but there are the chosen few who carry their own light to brighten both day and night.